This is Susie Carr reading from The Kirby Side of Life. Chapter 1 Never, in Faith Miller's wildest dreams, did she ever imagine her life could end up so out of control. That first drop of trouble, over a year ago, compounded. And then all certainty in life buckled, collapsing faster than she could put it back together. It all started when her spouse of ten years fell in love with a woman they worked with at the university. Next came the basement flood. After that, her layoff as a public relations specialist at the university happened. Oh, and then the squirrels. The fucking squirrels. On a drizzly morning, Faith sat on a sidewalk curb half a mile away from her home. She waited for a tow truck, which had already surpassed its promise of a 30-minute arrival. She stared at the smoldering giant nest on her car engine and groaned. Twigs, crunchy leaves, and white puffs of scratchy mattress stuffing smothered her engine. She expected a family of squirrels to pop out of its womb at any moment. She brushed a piece of lint off the sleeve of her new business suit and laughed at the absurdity of her situation. Her only interview sent her layoff, and there she sat in the rain with no choice but to call and cancel. A few minutes later, the squeaking of the tow truck's brakes brought Faith out of her wallow. She climbed to her feet, pushing aside memories of her former life with its full bank account and ego intact, and opened her eyes to the foul diesel truck that would tow her broken car down the interstate. An eagerness rested on the kind face of the man who walked tall with her. She latched onto it, grateful to see a friendly, familiar person. Third time's a charm, eh? he said, shaking her hand. Faith could only shrug. Mothballs didn't work this time, he asked. No, they caused my lungs to freak out and I ended up clinging to an oxygen mask in the emergency room. So, no, no to mothballs. He offered an apologetic nod. Well, I'll get it hooked up and then we can get it off to the mechanic again. Again. (laughs) Faith sat back down and watched as he examined the nest. Like the other two times, he pulled the nest apart and placed its contents into a trash bag. The squirrel worked hard on this one, he said. Faith understood too well how hard those squirrels worked to keep their home intact and how easily it could be destroyed. That afternoon, her sister Danielle called for their monthly check-in. Why don't you and Bristol come spend some time down at the lake house this summer? You've never seen it, and it's been so long since we've gotten together. Faith guzzled wine and stole a glance of herself in the mirror by the patio door. Despite having smoothed her layers with a large barrel curl and iron that morning, her natural waves, too dark and drab from lack of lowlights lately, spiraled more than usual around her shoulders. I need to find a job. Well, I have the internet here. We're not all sand and beach loungers. We even have a stove, refrigerator, and get this, electricity. <laughs> Way to win me over, sis, Faith said, wiping the smeared mascara from under her swollen dark eyes. Seriously, sis, you've got the summer off, and it would do you good to get away from that place for a while. Faith hadn't taken an extended vacation in over a decade, well before graduate school. I don't know. I could use the help at the salon. Faith laughed. (laughs) I haven't cut here since high school. If I visited, and that's a big if... I'm not cutting hair. I'll need to be sending out resumes so I can earn some income. Fine, send out resumes, and in between, we'll be silly. We'll drink wine, and you can watch me cut hair. Can you put my life back together while you're at it, she thought. Well, you know, I'll think about it. Faith looked at her watch. Stuart should have returned Bristol half an hour ago. He was probably helping a nice old lady put her groceries into the car. Listen, Danielle, I have to get going. Bristol will be home any minute, and I need to cook some dinner for her. How's my little cutie pie niece doing? Confused as ever, Faith thought. Um, well, yeah, she's doing fine. Well, give her a big hug from her auntie and tell her I have a big, beautiful lake house that she can enjoy this summer if her mother decides they should have some fun. (laughs) Will do. And sis, Danielle said, have faith. She smiled at her sister's favorite closing line. I love you, she said before hanging up. 
As the next hour passed and she waited on Stuart to bring Bristol home, she mulled over her sister's invite. Although a trip would do them good, and maybe even Danielle's magical soothing ability could get Bristol to start opening up again to the outside world, she needed to focus. One day, when she put her life back together, they'd take that trip. An hour later than scheduled, Bristol bolted through the front door with Stuart in her wake. Mommy, look, I'm wearing lipstick. Her seven-year-old daughter had painted her tiny lips glossy pink. You look beautiful, sweetheart. She hugged her daughter and kissed the top of her golden head of hair. She was a mini Stuart with her light hair and blue eyes. So Daddy bought you lipstick, huh? He didn't buy me lipstick, right, Daddy? She backed out of Faith's embrace. Stuart's cheek flinched. Then it turned red. No? Then where did you get it? Faith remained cheerful for Bristol's sake. Jilly gave it to me. Her cheeks pinked up in joy, innocent in her admiration for the woman who stole her daddy from her mommy. Faith glared at Stuart over Bristol's head. He began raking his hand through his thick head of hair. <sighs> Screw him, she thought. Hey, guess what? Faith smiled down at Bristol, taking her first bold step since the divorce. You and I are going to take a trip to Rhode Island to see Auntie Danielle's lake house this summer. For the whole summer? Bristol asked. For as long as we like. Faith tugged at Bristol's hand. Come on, let's get you some dinner. Well, wait a minute. You can't take her away for as long as you like, Stuart said. Faith stopped and tightened her squeeze around her daughter's hand. Sure I can. But what about my Saturday visitations? Oh, that's simple. You and your little girlfriend can drive down and see her on Saturdays. Wait, that that is not fair. Well, it never is, is it? Faith tugged Bristol along with her down the hallway. He mumbled something about the contractors needing time anyway to fix the basement flooring and walls from the flood they had suffered. Four days later, she and Bristol packed up their rental and headed to Rhode Island. They both needed that trip. She recited this to herself for the entire two-hour trip south from Boston. Time away from the problems of the failed marriage and her job loss would offer clarity, according to her best friend Sally. Faith sure hoped she was right. By noon, as she maneuvered the curvy roads of Rhode Island's South County, she relaxed. The air smelled as if it had been kissed by the sea. The plush green grass swayed on the front lawns of quaint lake homes with oversized porches adorned with colorful impatience. The American flag waved at them from in front of every bay window. Children chased one another and dogs barked. The sun sparkled on the gorgeous leaves of maples and oaks. Faith forgot how special and welcoming the streets of Rhode Island could be in the summertime. She hadn't visited often since leaving nearly 13 years prior to attend graduate school in Boston. Stewart disliked Danielle's in-laws. Faith liked Danielle's mother-in-law, Lucia, but Danielle's sister-in-law, Martina, was kind of hard to take with her overbearing personality. With nothing but time on her hands now, she returned to her home state seeking nourishment, something she knew she'd never find in the cement landscape of downtown Boston. With each bend in the road, she prayed somewhere on the other side of those curves that her problems would disappear and she'd begin to reclaim a piece of herself. In the rearview mirror, Bristol looked so small, like a scared pup wanting to remain in the comfort of a crate. Her baby blue eyes scanned the unfamiliar homes and people. This is going to be a great summer, she said to Bristol. I hope Auntie Danielle lets me play with her turtle. Ralph the turtle. Oh, they had pictures of him all over the side of their fridge. Danielle would send one with each letter she wrote to Bristol. I'm sure if you ask your auntie, she'll say yes. Faith caught her daughter's glum stare through the rearview mirror. Her heart sank. Poor kid was afraid to speak to anyone besides her and Stuart. Bristol deserved more than a set of divorced parents and a future filled with uncertainty. Anything could happen. And quite frankly, that level of surprise freaked Faith out. This is Susie Carr reading from The Curvy Side of Life.